a production of christianshow.com David Duff. Yeah. Yeah. Not a very common Swedish name. <laughs> David is okay, but Duff, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah, like or Duffson. <laughs> I'm just glad it doesn't have to be in Swedish because I'd be, I'd be thinking, I'd be like, hmm, yeah, I see you did it. <laughs> Some Swedish word must we have <laughs> yeah. from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, today we say uh, hello and welcome to David Duff, hello, stand-up comedian with a little special taste for music. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep, that's right. How do you start with the comedian and how you get to this? Um, well, I guess I'd have to say I started with influence from my dad um, when I was a little kid. He's um, he's always taking the piss. I guess you have that expression in Swedish too. Uh, but he's always joking, fooling around, and so I grew up in that kind of environment where you make jokes and you, you fool around. I guess it's a very Irish thing, really. You're always cracking jokes. I think uh, Eddie Izzard, the comedian, said that uh, stand-up comedy never works properly in Ireland because everyone is a stand-up comedian already. So it's kind of true. That's, that's difficult to compare with everyone. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing a gig in Ireland, normally someone in the audience will think they're funnier than you. And, I'll try to make a couple of jokes. Where are from Illinois? Uh, from Cork. That's in the south. It's, um, as they say in Cork, it's the real capital. <laughs> <laughs> the real island. Right? Yeah, yeah. How did you end up in Sweden? Um, by an aeroplane, actually. No. <laughs> I hope that's yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, uh, the, the same reason that most um, Irish or British men uh, end up in Sweden for uh, the love of a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> the Swedish woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Except uh, something went wrong and I ended up with a Finnish woman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a better choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> or worse, depending on your... What kind of uh, comedian you are you doing? Uh, myself? What? Yes. Um, I like to just do kind of um, uh, self-deprecating humor. Stuff about uh, just kind of me and stories about me and things involving stuff that I did. I don't really do topical or political stuff, I just kind of stick to stories that make me seem like an idiot, which is, <laughs> which is, yeah, it's not hard to exaggerate, so. That's happening in your life, right? Yeah, things that have actually happened. Uh, I can give you an instance, I, I, I don't know if, um, when I first moved here, um, I was couch surfing. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yes, but, I yeah, so it's really hard to get a place in Malmo because it's just really hard to get a accommodation. But there's a big backlog in all the apartments, so I ended up staying with a guy for two weeks. And on his door was uh, written what I thought was his name, but um, it turned out it was uh, Ingen Reklam. So, you know, no advertisements. But he was so polite and so Swedish that for the whole two weeks I was staying there, he didn't correct me. And I was calling him Mr. Reklam for <laughs> two whole weeks. And it was just, it's so bad because he, he still saved on my phone as Mr. Reklam. <laughs> Yeah, I, I turned that into a, a big joke, but that actually really happened, so... <laughs> it's it's a lot, lot of people in Sweden that have their name, I think. Yeah. I see it a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 that kind of happened too, because when, when I moved into my new place then, I saw the name Ingen Reklam was on the door, and I actually called him and I said, You're never going to believe this, Mr. Reklam. I'm staying in your old student apartment. <laughs> it's may, maybe normally we say Svensson. Ah, yeah. Name. Maybe you have changed it. <laughs> yeah, to, to reclaim. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say you're start with this little bit of history. Take it a lot to history. Oh, yeah, well, my, my dad, he, he doesn't do comedy, but he's always telling stories and cracking jokes. And um, he's just always kind of taking the piss, like I said. So uh, I suppose I could I could give you one instance of uh, his kind of his brand of humor or his his mentality. Um, he's a plumber. Um, I'm actually a qualified electrician myself because in in my family you have to have a, a trade to be to be a proper man. But so he's a plumber, and normally in Ireland uh, when you're kind of a teenager, maybe 15 or 16, uh, your parents will try to get you to go working with a tradesman for a summer just to get you experience. So this happened about geez, I'd say it must be. 
16 years ago this happened and I only heard about it just recently from my friend. My friend, he's um, a bit older than me. He told me this story about my dad. So my friend's name is Mark and it was, Mark was just 16 and it was his first summer like getting a job and his parents got him to work with my dad. So he was using a jackhammer or a kango hammer. I'm not sure what the Swedish word is, but really loud machine. And he's only 16, first day using the thing and he's kango really loud. Duh, 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 duh. And after about an hour of this, he says to my dad, uh, Mr. Duff, um, do you have any um, earmuffs I can use? And my dad, without missing a beat, turned to him and he said, I'm not paying you to listen to the fucking thing, just can't go to the fucking floor. And that's, uh, that's his attitude. <laughs> so it's, the whole stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's just always kind of just, just quick little, you know, little, little remarks, little, little quick things. I think. When, when do you start on the stage? And um, I was actually 17 when I first went on stage. Um, when I started doing comedy in Cork, there was very little places to do it. Um, there was maybe there was one actual comedy venue, but that was impossible to get a gig in because I was so young, so they didn't want me on the stage. So I kind of gave up with that idea, and I just went to open mic nights. And that's how I ended up kind of doing funny songs, because I wanted to do comedy, but I didn't want to just do singing, and I couldn't just go on stage at a singer-songwriter night and do comedy, so I had to write funny songs, and that came from there. That's why a lot of my material is funny songs, or songs that are about funny things. One, two, three. Oh, I must make a confession, there's a secret I got, there's a leader here in Europe, I think is real hot. Her looks were hit behind the wall for nearly half her life, she's the grabber of attention and I want her as my wife. She's beautiful, she's brilliant, I think she's the best, and just like she shows her cleavage, I must get this off my chest. That, that's all I get. Nothing, nothing mm. answers for. Oh, Angola, you got a science degree. Won't you put it to some use? We got chemistry. Oh, Angola, I swear one thing's for certain. Just tonight, when me in bed, when you wake up, you'll be like the Irish economy, hurting Angola. La, la, la. Just your life, I swear, in orals. Oh, Angola, you speak the language, but I ain't Russian, you still. Until we get together, my balls will be Prussian blue. You're stern and you're firm, and you don't take no guff, but I hope with the right words that you'll take some duff. That's me, Angola. Seven. 
heaven and go Ekliebe dik Angela, win the election for us and for everyone. Mwah! Cheers. Hey, hey. Things, yes, you're not that normal stand up to me. Yeah. Yes, you have the music too, I understand. Yeah, it's a bit of a mix of both. See, it's a little more yeah. interesting than normally common. Yeah, it's true, yeah. Like, sometimes I'll do like a show of just music, or the other times then I'll do one of just talking, but I normally like to mix the two up and have a bit, bit of both. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a break too, and you know, people are. I think naturally, when people listen to a song, they kind of, they, they what's the word? They reciprocate the feelings more, and they, they receive the the kind of jokes easier. Um, I guess it's kind of about the same. Yeah, fifty-fifty. Um, uh, what I really like doing is actually um, writing my, my blog, my funny blog. Um, it's quite popular in Finland for some reason, but <laughs> I, yeah, it is true. Yeah, it's, uh, I have lots of stories about Finland, so it's popular there. My, okay. my, my experience in the sauna. So I just, just like, like making funny stories about things that have actually happened. Yeah, for some strange reason. Well, I, I guess it's about uh, the first time I went for a sauna in Finland. That's the most popular one I have. It was um, quite, quite an experience, because be, being Irish, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Irish people generally don't like being naked around anyone. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it's, some, it's something to do with the, the whole Catholic thing. So you're, you're taught that your, your body is a dirty thing and no one should see it, not even yourself, don't look at it. And so the first time I went for a sauna in Finland, I was petrified, absolutely terrified, because there was three people who were going to see me naked, and it was just a horrible, terrifying experience. I'm okay with it now, I, I, yeah, but the first time I did it, it was just, oh, it was absolutely awful. Do you stand in the vodka? Uh, yeah, we even had vodka in the, in the sauna, yeah. Did you fix it? <laughs> yeah, that made it better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is true, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it's cheaper. <laughs> it's something to do with that, I'd say. So, uh, what gave you the inspiration and, uh, to find all these jokes and where you find the jokes? Um, sometimes I just just real life things like that really happened, like like the Ingen Reklam thing I told you. And then another story that happened was um, my friend played the joke on me because um, I'm an electrician. So um, I was actually asking him, how do I talk to people and tell them I'm an electrician in Swedish? And he said, oh, well, because you work with uh, voltage and because you work with technical things and because you are a man, you would be a Voltex man. And I believed him. I really did. So for a few weeks there, I was walking around and when someone asked me what I did in Ireland, I'd say, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I am a Voltex man. <laughs> And it wasn't until someone said, uh, are, are, are you sure you're a Voltex man? And I said, yeah, I, I served four years as a Voltex man. I'm a you know, fully qualified Voltex man from Ireland too. <laughs> I was corrected then. I, I know now it's, uh, it's not true. But, <laughs> but just kind of things like that when, when stuff happens. That, that's a legal one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other one is not legal. <laughs> no, no. Find new material. Um, it can be sometimes. It can be difficult to find material for particular audiences. Like, um, for example, like uh, stuff that works in Sweden won't, might, or probably won't work in Ireland, or vice versa. Stuff that works in Ireland won't work in Sweden. So, like, all the stuff I do nowadays is more orientated towards kind of Swedish or European audiences, and it's quite different from what I used to do before. And I, I talk a lot slower as well, so. So I do notice that when I go back to Ireland, um, I have to talk faster and change my jokes and How do. Fast? Oh, I, I, I can give Double you an speed? Yes, yeah, I can give you an example of how people yeah. talk from where. So uh, I'm from Cork, and so people in Cork they go, "What's the story? Why are you from Cork? Yeah, this is why I live now. When you don't jokes there, you know what I mean, like." Okay. And it's just, just very, very fast talking, kind of high pitched, up and down, up and down. Yeah, Cork people they um, they sound like they're they're crying or about to cry all the time. That's. Like, oh, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> they sound kind of upset. Are you speaking Swedish too? 
yes, I can speak Swedish uh, fairly well. Not not perfect, but pretty well. I suppose I have a invandare svenska. So. Uh, uh, sw- I have immigrant Swedish. Okay. Invandare svenska. <laughs> Have ended up in SFE. <laughs> yeah, I did. I went to SFE. Yeah, yeah. I went to SFE. That was uh, that was interesting. You know, you know uh, what it stands for? Yeah, yeah. Swedish for immigrants. No. Oh no. No, no. It stands for Skanska. Oh, uh, Skanska. Immigrants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that means Swedish people that's coming down here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they can learn the language. Do you speak Skanska? No, thankfully. <laughs> it's very easy. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> yeah, I find that uh, the 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 yag, yag, yag er. It's uh, I don't know. Skånska kind of reminds me of um, Dutch or Danish, I guess, is the closest thing. <laughs> yeah, the Danish. Yeah. Is quite close. Yeah. Are you performing more in, uh, in Ireland than in Sweden? No, a mixture of both. Um, like uh, Are you in Denmark or? Denmark? Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, just the whole of Europe, really. Um, yeah, I'm I'm somewhere else every week, so. It involves a lot of traveling, which is quite fun. Mm-hmm. I get to see lots of places I wouldn't see normally. So I I can, get a lot of travel, yeah, it can be quite nice, but it can also be quite tiring. Because what, what can be difficult is when you go to a city and you do a gig, and then you have to get up the next morning and leave to do a gig in a different city. and So you never get to experience life in that city. You just have to go, 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 go. And it's not until your very final day that you can get a break and kind of relax. So it can be quite stressful sometimes, but... I guess it's a it's a nice career. <laughs> it is. To Germany and so on. Well, people love having jokes made about themselves, like well, except for Irish people. When when you make a joke about an Irish person, they just they kind of try to fuck off. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the attitude they have back home. But most people, like uh, like in Sweden, when you when you say something about Swedish people, like how Swedish people always stand apart at bus stops, or when you point out something you know inherent to their to their culture, they they quite like it. But it's uh, that's kind of, I, I guess that's the thing that translates best in in all countries. Just talking about that country and about what's strange and what's different about them. Just before I make a joke. Is yeah, like normally you get to a country and I'll you'll ask a comedian who's based there or a friend who's based there and you'll say, oh, so what's special about this country? So, for example, in Bel- Belgium, um, I found out about King Leopold, who used to chop off hands of people in the Congo, which is quite a dark and terrible thing. But in the place I was in a gig there in Antwerp, what I found quite funny, there was a photographer and the background of the pub, it was pictures from the Congo, but all the people were hiding their hands. And so I just made a joke about it, how, um, how saying trusted to be a bar in Belgium where they have pictures of people from the Congo and everyone's hiding their hands. So, you know, just small things like that that work in other cultures. Kind of, that's kind of a dark example, but that's, that's things that work. I mean, that's me and you must have a lot of different performance shows yeah shows exactly yeah 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 um yeah oh you do get crazy yeah yeah like you keep notes and you keep like a track of what works in one place and what works in another place so like i do have like like stuff on my computer written down that says you know like this works here and here and here and this doesn't work here so don't do that here, but do this here, and you know, vice versa, those kind of things. <coughs> okay, one second, gotta make sure I can't get in the direction. There we go. is out, I'm all alone, and sitting here inside her home, it's time for some self-titillation, so on I flick a sexy station, the movie's plot is kind of shit, but that's not why I'm watching it, you see, recently I've had a crisis, and some friends told me I should try this, I sit there with myself in hand, and watch a woman with a man, both go at it like they're a rabbit, but I stay completely flaccid. I've asked for help on Facebook, tap the symptoms into Google I've made attempts to make it work with movies that are blue I've eaten some Viagra, hell I had a fist or two I've called up sexy hotlines and I've even gone to mass But 
nothing works, no porn or pills or even fingers in the fingers in the mouth, nowhere else I swear. <laughs> I see something to help my situation Something which fills me with gladness Something to take away my sadness Something to help with my blues Something known as a thigh masseuse Later that day I lie in situ The masseuse reaches for a tissue I start to panic, there's nothing showing No flag at mass, no red cells flowing My mind races for an excuse But there's no point and there's no use Here we go I can't get an erection My man parts have a defection I peter pan some happy thoughts But nothing seems to rise There's no movement below my navel Nothing up between my thighs, I scream and shout, but that just scares the masseuse, who is Asian. I punch it, and she calls the security guard, and I worry because when I see him, I finally get nothing. Nothing happens. It just gets scary. That's all. <laughs> no, no, nothing else happens. That's all. That's all. Function is a very serious problem, and if you suffer from it, you should consult your doctor or maybe your obstetrician if your wife knows one. Function. Like, I have some songs that work quite well in Ireland, but they don't really work well outside of Ireland, so I can't do them here. Or I have some jokes about Sweden that I can't do anywhere else, except Denmark, because Danes like laughing at Swedish people. <laughs> I think it's an old. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, geez, no. I, to be honest, the, the idea of fame terrifies me. Okay. I, I, it really does. I'd hate to be the kind of person who walks down the street and can't get peace and quiet. I, I just like, um, I like uh, making people laugh. That's, the, that's it, really. To make people happy. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Make people laugh. I guess, or make people happy. Or, yeah. I guess if a gig goes bad, then you make them happiest by leaving the stage. But <laughs> 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 so it still works. Guarantee that I get happy in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How is that? Yeah. Even if you're funny or not, so they'd be happy when you leave. Exactly, That's yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> How much are you traveling a year? Uh, quite a lot. Like, for example, this evening now I'm, I'm going to Ireland uh, in a flight in a while. And um, I'm going to, I'll be traveling all next month. And so I'm just, it's always traveling really. Every week or two I'll be going somewhere else. So it's, um, it can be, it, it does annoy, like, uh, most comedians are in relationships, their significant other always gets quite annoyed because they're always on the road, or they're always somewhere else. <laughs> it can make relationships quite difficult. Um, I guess it, um, she doesn't like it. <laughs> because you're not home and yeah, yeah, yeah. Apartment. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it makes it difficult to have a girlfriend, but I imagine if you have a, a marriage, it works perfect because then you never see each other, so they're quite happy. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Any job that involves traveling, it can make it difficult to have a, like a normal life because you're doing like an abnormal thing. You're never staying in one place. You're going somewhere else all the time. It's perfect for a single person, obviously, but the moment you have kids or the moment you have a relationship, then it kind of becomes quite difficult. I have no kids. <laughs> So. I have a wife, I think. Well, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, two wives, one in each country. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> or several wives. Ah, okay. <laughs> How many countries do you have in your opinion? Yeah, 28, yeah. 28 <laughs> wives, yeah. That way I'm making 28 people equally miserable. <laughs> so you wait until we get a new uh, country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can get one more. <laughs> yeah. That makes accommodation cheaper. <laughs> And, uh, what you say? In my downtime? Like, well, no, I mean, from, from the comedian job. I mean, you're not funny 24 hours. Oh, no, thinking. yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> what like, do you do to get the power back? Yeah. Oh, can, like, yeah, recharge yourself, yeah, yeah. Uh, you to, like, like most comedians, I, I do what they do, just kind of, I like to be alone, so just, you know, like, take some time by myself and just be alone, like don't hang out with people and just relax in peace and quiet at home. <laughs> you know one around you. <laughs> Sitting in the sofa and doing nothing. Yeah, just chill out and let your brain relax and just cool down. No coffee, nothing. Oh, of course, coffee, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, coffee. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a beer, maybe two beers. But, uh, you know, just kind of be alone and just get time to think and just time to take to yourself. Because it's a very social um, thing to do to do comedy, so when you're when you get time to yourself, then it's kind of like a little you know, bit of a nugget of treasure. You get to relax. You don't have to make people laugh. You don't have to worry about being entertaining. Are you doing any special when you're sitting in a sofa more than drinking a cup of beer? No, no, just relaxing. You're yeah, yeah. Sitting in. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting, uh, brushing my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I have some num nums. Back, 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 back. Twirl, twirl. Other one. Twirl, twirl, lie, dead, 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 no. That's why it's so good looking. Yeah. And I see that I don't picture. It was new grass the whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little interesting to compare. Yeah. I actually like to play guitar to relax as well. That's another thing I do. Yeah, without having to come up with new songs, just playing the guitar. It can be nice and therapeutic, I guess is what you call it. But yeah, it can be nice. People that's interesting for you on the internet? I guess uh, Twitter, although I'm kind of a late uh, bloomer to Twitter. I only joined Twitter five or six months ago, I think. Very recent. I, I was quite late getting on, on the Twitter bandwagon. What's your name, Dan? Uh, David Duff Comedy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and make an effort to get a good Twitter going this year, so... <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Yeah, on on Facebook and YouTube, it's all David Duff comedy. You'll find like if you just type it into Google, I guess you'll okay. st stuff will pop up. So you find. Yeah, like yeah, a link links to my blog will pop up, and links to the YouTube videos will pop up. So they can find. It. Yeah. And learn more about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, we do always another. Uh, part of the interview, that's uh, uh, who do you want to pass this interview to, because you can choose another person. Ah, cool. Who did and ask if we can do the, that? Yeah. Do you have any name you ha want to Have you interviewed Khalid already, Khalid Gira? Khalid, Khalid I uh, meet. You have met him? Okay. He's, yeah, he's very funny. Me as a person, but uh, oh, have you, I have not interviewed him. Oh, you should. Yeah, I think you should interview him. Yes? Yeah, he lives in Helsingborg as well, so. I think he's a very funny guy, and we've done some shows together, and we're actually doing a show together, a big show, uh, at the Lund Humor Festival on August 29th in AF Stora Sin, or the theatre, the big theatre, and we're doing a show together then called Ya Ha Ha, so I think he'd be a nice little tie-in to, to that uh, show, maybe good to maybe mention him, or get him, get him on board for the interview. That's, that's 
the one you want to pass it through? Yeah. Do you have any special question you want him to answer in the interview? Oh, um... Something you want to know? <laughs> uh, hmm... Let me think... Jeez, I can't think of anything right now. I'll, I'll, I'll think of it in my head, I'll work something over quickly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no problem. <laughs> yes, we have... Some people are, are sending some uh, questions to you. Oh, really? Yes. Not many now. Some of them. <laughs> uh, what have you done if you not uh, was a comedian or a stand-up comedian? Uh, electrician. That's plain and simple. Yeah. Electrical. Or Voltex man, as you <laughs> Who has... Uh, who is your uh, idol? Uh, In comedy? Yes. Uh, uh, not in company, in life. Oh, in real life. Um, oh. Hmm. Person you admire or something? Admire the most. I suppose. Or you inspire you? Yeah, I, I'd be quite inspired by. Um, I, I guess the comedian Bill Hicks. I guess that's a kind of a common answer amongst comedians. He was very, very funny. Very funny guy. And um, I quite like um, Tim Minchin for funny songs. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's an Australian uh, musical comedian. He's quite kind of big now, and he has some very clever lyrics and funny music, and he's just very talented. He's quite inspiring. The Flight of the Concords, also, they're quite quite funny. So, uh, and I guess yeah, that'd be about it. Maybe I have no one, no one else, no one deep. I guess maybe uh, maybe Socrates, <laughs> the philosopher. <laughs> It just kind of uh, depends who you meet, and at the moment there's there's like a, a big European um, circuit developing, kind of separate from the British and Irish things, and it's just it's 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 just kind of beginning really. And I think it's only about three or four years old, and it's getting bigger. And I would imagine in five or six years' time you'll see it's going to be quite big. And um, like I'm only just a regular circuit comedian. I do small support acts and uh, just go around doing gigs here and there in Europe. But there's some acts that are getting quite big, and I, I guess you'll you hear them in the future. And it's just really who you know, I guess. You have to be nice and be kind. That's one of the biggest um, tips you can give in comedy. Just don't be a dickhead. <laughs> that's, that's, the main, that's actually the main thing. Don't be a dickhead and you'll, you'll get loads of gigs. Um, how do you do in Germany and France or a country like that? Can they take the jokes in English? Or yeah, masters? yeah. Yeah, all the shows are always like uh, for audiences who speak English, uh, so generally it works quite well. Um, but you you find that different audiences are are have different senses of humor. Um, like I noticed the Dutch people, they quite like uh, dirty stuff. They they like you know really kind of dirty jokes and being being rude. Yeah, famous yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And yet yeah, the German audiences then they they're just very uh, re reserved. They they like if they like a joke. They laugh a little, but they mostly clap. And they go, yes, this was very funny. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it can make it... Uh, sometimes you can make a part of the act. Like if you find someone in the audience who can speak English quite well, you can just start talking to them and you can make some jokes about it and just talk about uh, how shit they are at English and how you're Irish and you're also shit at English. <laughs> so, which is kind of true. Hi, Jesus Christ, where do you always fucking read? Why can't we fucking green the cutting things? <laughs> I go up that cunted fucking village in fucking uh, Ballycally, and I go up to a thousand times, a thousand times of fucking lights by Times Square. It's always fucking red. I go out the other way, they're always fucking red. I never come across them in a cunt of green. <laughs> Why? You drive me fucking demented, boy, with your temper. It's crazy. But I've got the fucking lights and all that. But do you not think they're red for a reason? Yeah, because I come along to the fucking ends. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> I genuinely, I, I think that in Swedish people really can speak better English than most Irish or British people. Why? <laughs> yeah. Something I find quite funny about Swedish English though is that Swedish people seem to catch accents very easily. Yes. I've noticed that. I have a, a friend. And Give me two hours with us and I start. That's, yeah, like I was about to say that, yeah. I have a friend, he stayed at me for two weeks and he started talking with an Irish accent. Uh, he, he had more of an Irish accent than I did, which was just really strange. Yeah. 
I guess my question for Khalid could be, uh, can he do an Irish impression? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That'd be quite funny. Yeah, it's quite small, yeah. It can be, yeah. And then, the, like, I guess, really, you should try and make it big in the British and Irish markets because that's where the most opportunities are. But the problem with that, then, is that there's so many people doing comedy in those places. Like, there's so, so many. It's crazy. I think when I first started in, in Cork 11 years ago, there was very, very, like, a handful of comedians. Like, And I've known some of them, and lots of them aren't doing comedy anymore. But since then, jeez, it's just... Oh, there's hundreds. It really is. It's just crazy. So, so many. It's so boring. So yeah. So yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. They train them and just send them off, yeah. Problem with that could be Europe, yeah. Spain, and Ireland. Yeah, that's what happened, we have no money. Yeah, you go make people laugh over there. Yes. Tell them how poor we are. Yeah, it's just, I, like I said, it's just, another, you just have to know people, really. That's, that's always the biggest thing. Like, once you get to know someone, quite like promoters and agents, if you get in well with some people, you'll get on great. Because there's some comedians who are, you know, they're only okay, but just because they're friendly and they're nice and people like them, they get loads of gigs. And then other, other comedians who are really, really good, but they're just absolute assholes and they get no gigs. And then obviously you have people who are assholes and get gigs somehow still. <laughs> it's quite interesting too because from not having lived in Ireland for the past few years, I can notice things about Irish culture that I wouldn't have noticed before. And it's just interesting. Like, in Ireland, there's just signs everywhere telling people not to do things. Okay. Because they do stuff anyway. <laughs> but uh, the, my favorite example is at the airport in Dublin. There's a big fence, uh, maybe, I think it's about at least a half a kilometer long. And you're not meant to jump over it. It's that high, like, you're not supposed to jump over it because it's going onto a road. But they still have had to put signs up saying, don't jump over this fence. But... Irish people are still doing it. They're still jumping over the fence. <laughs> it's, it's a very Irish thing. There was a wall as well I saw uh, in Cork recently, and the wall is about to fall down. But rather than repair the wall, they just put up signs on the wall saying, saying be careful, uh, unsafe wall. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just very kind of lazy. It's just... Are they following the uh, Not really, no, because I saw kids walking. Or... Yeah, people just don't even pay attention to the signs. They just walk on top of them, and then when an accident happens, they say, oh, there was a sign there. No, you, you should have known. That's... You see, I'm actually an electrician. Shocking, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, actually an electrician. Um, and I was having breakfast with Mr. Verklam one morning, and uh, him and I, uh, we were having a chat, you know, and... I'm sitting down at the table with my toast, and I'm working my toast, and talking to Mr. Reclam, and I say to Mr. Reclam, uh, excuse me, Mr. Reclam, I have an interview with Arbet Vermillion this morning. That's the job, in, the job place, guys. Uh, I have an interview with Arbet Vermillion. How do I say in Swedish that I'm an electrician? Mr. Reclam laughed. <laughs> I should have known something was wrong right there. <laughs> Didn't have a clue. He said to me, Well, David, because you work with a voltage, and because you work with technical things, and because you are a man, you would be a Voltex man. <laughs> For those of you who don't speak Swedish, he told me I was a rapist. <laughs> so I believed him. <laughs> I'm walking into Malmo City to the Arbets of Melligan. I'm a Voltex man, I'm a Voltex man. <laughs> I'm repeating to myself, Ya yeah, air and Voltex man, Ya yeah, air and Voltex man. I go in, I sit down in front of the woman, very nice lady, having the meeting. I say to her, hello, uh, I'm David Dove, very nice to meet you. And she says, oh, uh, so do you have any skills or qualifications? I say, yes, actually, I am an el I'm Voltex, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Four years uh, in Ireland, when you do an apprenticeship, you, you say you served your time. So that's why I said to her, yeah, I served four years in Ireland as a Voltex, man. <laughs> Sir, four years as a Voltex man, and 
after I finished, I, uh, I went to Australia, did some Voltex in there. As you do, you know, when in Rome. Um, I'm here in Sweden now, trying to get some Voltex. You know, uh, uh, the, the whole language barrier is making it difficult. Uh, if I can't do any here, I'll probably go home at Christmas time, do some with my dad. He's a Voltex man too. Uh, and she looked at me and she said, uh, I think maybe you should look for work in Denmark. <laughs> yes, I have now. More? Yeah. So, uh, so thank you, Christian. Like... It's been a good interview. Yes. Yeah. Nice to have you here. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And I guess I will go catch yes. my plane. Yeah. Ah. You never want to miss the latest and newest upcoming video interviews on christianschoen.com. Then immediately subscribe here and follow us in our different media channels on christianschoen.com.